So this is my first in-depth look at nodes, and we're going to be looking at parallels, and I've got something for everyone here. If you're an absolute beginner, I'm going to teach you the difference between serial nodes and parallel nodes. So in just a few minutes, you're going to understand exactly how they work, when and why you use them. We're going to look then at my fixed node tree and why I use parallels, and a particular technique that I use called dodge and burn. And then we're going to look at a little bit about the science behind it, what's actually happening under the hood in Resolve. So let's have a look. So I get quite a lot of questions about my node trees, my fixed node trees that I use. This is one that I typically use for music promos. I have some that are larger than this if I'm working on drama work, and I've got some fixed node trees that are smaller than this if I'm working with documentary stuff where I have to be a little bit quicker in my workflow. But the common theme amongst all of them is I have a string of parallels and sometimes two strings of parallels. So let me show you that one if I get to my power grade here. This is one that I typically use for drama work or commercial work. So you can see I've got a row of parallels here and a row of parallels here. So this next section is for absolute beginners. I'm going to teach you in just a few minutes exactly how serials and parallels work. You will totally understand when and why you use them. If you already know, have a look at the time description below and just jump ahead to the next bit. So starting from absolute scratch, this is our footage with nothing on it at all. I've got a single serial node here that's completely blank. So what I'm going to do is just do a very quick balance. This is ARRI log C footage. Uh, normally I would apply a color space transform to this to get it into the right color space, but I'm just going to do a simple bit of lift gamma gain here just to keep it simple. Let's put some saturation in there. And that's absolutely fine for now. Let me just lift that up a little bit there. Something like that. Okay, I'm going to add another serial node. So I'm going to right hand click on here. I'm going to say add serial. Okay, now a serial node, this node number two that I've just created gets its information from node one. Node one is getting its information from the source. This represents the source, the ARRI log C footage that you saw at the start. So that's feeding into here. And then the grade that I've done on node one is fed into node two. So let's start playing around with Node 2. What I'm going to do is completely desaturate the image. Okay, so we've now got a black and white image. Now I'm going to go ahead and add another node, add serial. Okay, and on this node now, I'm going to try and bring back saturation. But watch what happens. When I boost saturation, nothing happens because the image is already desaturated. If we look at our vector scope, you'll see a tiny little dot in the middle means there is zero saturation. So because we desaturated on Node 2, the output of node 2, which is basically node 1 plus node 2, is being fed along this RGB connector into node 3. And because the saturation was taken out here, I don't have saturation to put back. So all I can do on node 3 is I can start doing some tinting, for example. So I can add sort of a color wash, but I can't actually get the original saturation that was in the image. Now, let me delete that node. Instead of adding a serial, I'm going to add a parallel. So I'm going to say add node, add parallel. And what happens now is node 2 is still got our desaturation on it, so it's black and white. Node 4, it creates node 4 because it counts the parallel mixer as node 3. So this is a parallel mixer. This is added automatically when you add a parallel node. So it counts this as node 3 effectively, but you can't actually do anything on these. You can't add color or do anything to them. So if I go to node 4, I can now bring back saturation by just increasing saturation here. So if I go to saturation 100, we are now back where we started. And the reason for that is that the information for node four is actually coming from node one, not node two. Okay, so node two is our desaturation. Node one is our first balance that we did. It's our original balance. If I just deselect these two and press Command D, it's our original balance. And that is feeding both node four and node two. The parallel mixer is then mixing the two together in equal proportion, okay? So by desaturating and then fully saturating, I'm back to where I started from. So that is what a parallel is doing. A parallel mixer is combining all the nodes, and you don't have to have just two, you can have three, four, five, so let me add another one. You can say add node, add parallel, and you just keep adding them as many as you want in there, five, six, seven, eight, nine, however many you want. And they will all be equally combined and they come from the same source. In fact, you can reroute the source as well. You can actually take it from a different source, but that's for another episode. So let's go back to our image. 
Okay, so let's have a look at what is going on on this fixed node tree. So I'm just gonna deselect it all. I'm gonna use Command D. I'm gonna use Command D a lot here to switch nodes on and off, okay? So however many you've got selected, Command D will switch that amount of nodes off. So my first node that I work with is this one here. It's the first one after this row of parallels, and it's my color space transform. Okay, so this one is currently set to take me from Ari Log C into Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. All right, so that's just up here in the open effects. If I click on that, you can see that set there. So then what I do is I move over to my first nodes here. This first one here is just doing noise reduction. The second one I've got going on here is just doing obviously my offset, getting me into the right starting point. I've got my parade on. And uh, I've got a little bit of uh, highlight recovery going on, some saturation, a few bits and pieces going on here. So my second node will also be doing a similar sort of thing. So I'll be looking at, uh, normally I'll be adjusting things like temperature here and things like that, just to get me in a good starting point. So this is my basic balance. Then I move on to this row of parallels here. I don't necessarily use all of these, but this starts to give me my creative look. So I'm gonna switch these on all of them at once so you can see the difference it's making. So there's a lot of work going on there to get the actual look that I wanted. So I'll switch it on and off, so, okay? So what's actually going on here? This node here is just giving us a little bit of extra work in the primaries. This node here is doing some log work. So if I switch this one on and off, you'll see that I'm picking up some detail in the shadows and just adjusting the color to get the blacks right. This node here is affecting the wall at the back. Okay, so I'm just affecting this blue wall here. And then these four nodes are shapes that I'm working with. And what I'm doing here is a technique that is similar to dodge and burn. So it's called dodge and burn. And it's basically allowing me to lift certain areas and drop certain areas down, okay? Now there is a bit of overlap on these. So this one here is affecting the whole central region. If I just switch that on and off. Okay, I'm just lifting it. And then this one here is lifting this bit. This one here is darkening that area, and this one here is just lifting that section. So there's a lot of crossover between these windows. And if I switch them all on and off, you'll see that it really is reshaping how the light works on my image. Now, the reason these work well, and the reason I'm working in parallels, is because I want everything fed from the balance node that I've got. So it's the sum of these two is feeding each of these layers in my parallel individually. Now, if I did this with serial nodes, the problem I've got is that this node would then be feeding this node, would then feed the wall, which would then feed the shape, and this shape, and this shape, and this shape, and they would be adding on to each other. All right, so what I've done is I've actually recreated this using serial nodes to show you what it would look like. And you'll see that it looks quite different to the parallel. So I'm just gonna use my middle mouse click and apply that grade. And there's the grade, exactly the same parameters. I've copied and pasted the parameters, but done as a row of serials, okay? So back to parallel and back to serial. And you can see there's quite a difference, particularly in this area here where I'm getting lots of light being sort of multiplied. So in the parallel node, these areas, the amount of exposure that I give them inside the window is coming from the same node. It's coming from this node here. So this is fundamental to how I'm working. I want everything to mix. Remember the parallel node mixes everything equally. Whereas with serial, one node will affect the next node. So let's just take a quick look at what's actually happening in Resolve when I select a serial node or a parallel node, and particularly why I'm using parallels when I'm shaping light. This will answer that question. So hit the subscription button if you're enjoying this so far, and let's go and take a look. So I'm at the end of my timeline, and I just want to explain what's going on here. I've got a gray solid here with a value of 127127127 in RGB, and that is sitting at 512 on our waveform. Now, what I'm going to do is grab a still of this, and I'm gonna add a serial node. And I'm gonna show you here a very subtle difference between the serial and the parallel node, which gives you another reason why I use my parallels. So let's add a power window. So it's a default power window with some softness in it. And I'm gonna increase this by exactly 0.5. I'm gonna use my panel just because I can get there quicker. So we've increased gain by 1.5 and you can see there that it's quite clearly hitting 768 on our scope. And this is our soft edge that we've got going on. Okay, so you just see the fall off on the soft edge. Okay, let's add another serial. And this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the exact same shape and the parameter. So I'm gonna use my option drag, which copies the parameter in. I'm now gonna reset the gain. and I'm gonna decrease it by 0.5. I'm gonna use my panel just for speed. And what's happening is the output of node two is being fed into node three. So when we take away 
uh, half of our gain, we don't get back to a neutral point. We actually come down here to 384. So what we can do is use the gray that we started with uh, using a image wipe, and we can try and match it by eye and by using the scope. So I'm just gonna increase my gain this time, and let's pull it up until we hit the 512 line. And you can see as we get there, we're never quite gonna get it on the line. And what we're getting is this kind of halo effect around the edge from the softness. And that's because we've not been fed a true flat signal to start with. We've been fed this node's signal, which already has a bit of softness and gain on it. So by reducing gain, even though we've got a power window with the same amount of softness, we are never gonna get it exactly sat on the line. And this is why I use parallels when I'm doing the dodge and burn because I don't want accumulation of nodes doing this to my image. So let's see what happens if we do this with a parallel node. I'm gonna take off the split wipe. I'm gonna delete that node. And this time I'm gonna add a parallel node. So option P. I'm gonna copy the exact shape and the grade across. I'm gonna then reset the gain. And now what I'm gonna do is reduce this by 0.5 bring it all the way down and you can see that we get perfectly neutral because both of these are being fed from the same source. So they're being fed from the neutral gray into, into node two and neutral gray into node four. So it counts the parallel mixer as node three. And what the parallel mixer is doing is mixing these in an equal amount. So when I'm doing dodge and burn on multiple nodes, if I work in parallel, I'm not gonna get one of them affecting the other in, in a direct way. So let's go back to our shot. Here's our four nodes that we've used power windows on. And you can see we get a much nicer image than if we did that using serials. So I hope you enjoyed that episode and you are enlightened on the world of parallels. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode.